Uh, Keith Rubino and Tim Lyon, uh, both are Democrats, running for the legislature in Districts 1 and 2 in Herkimer County. And, uh, gentlemen, good morning. 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 So, um, Keith, right? Yes. Uh, Keith, we'll start with you. Um, who, who is your opponent, by the way? Uh, Greg Malta. Okay. And why should people consider you a Democrat in Herkimer County? You know, in Herkimer County, the, the political, I, I've knocked on many doors already. I've knocked on about two, 300 doors so far. Yeah. Uh, plan on knocking on more. And these people really don't have any political ties. They think they do, but they actually don't, you know, and especially in Herkimer County, what they want is change. And, you know, what Tim and I have found out is knocking on doors. There are people who just genuinely want to see change and the legislature as a whole uh, has not been successful in really demonstrating or displaying any kind of change at all. So what we're running on is the idea that legislators that represent people in their districts, whether it's my district of one or Tim's district in 12, mm -hmm. need to stand up on the legislature and question things. Find where, is out. It, where is one, by the way? District uh, one, one is, one is uh, right in Herkimer. It's on Caroline Street, okay. goes down to German and extends down to German Flats. And two is... Uh, uh, Tim's actually <clears throat> 12, by the way. Oh, it's yeah, he's 12. 12. But and District 12 is pretty much the whole city of Little Falls, except for oh, okay. a, a part of Ward 3. But, that uh, lion's name yeah. uh, reminds me of maybe Little Falls, Dollarsville. Yep, uh, uh, yeah. I am... Uh, one of the Dodger Lions. My, my father was Lions. Uh, one of the, he was the youngest of the 14 yeah. major Lions in Dodgeville. So I, wow. uh, my first years in radio were in Little Falls and I did high school football, play by play and all that stuff. And the Lions name was a big name out of Dodgeville. It's Lions with a Y. Yes. Yeah. Okay, uh, gentlemen. So as Democrats, good luck. Hey, thanks. In Herkimer County. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you not know, just a Democrat, but if I'm correct, Keith, were you a Bernie Sanders supporter? Yeah, but uh, you know, I, I would like to think that the people of Herkimer County and the people in my district are gonna are, are gonna vote on me based on the local issues that I stand for. Right. You know, when I when I knock on people's doors, I'm 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 proud to be a Bernie supporter, but in in general, knocking on people's doors locally, the first things I talk about are the local issues. And actually the first thing I do when I knock on people's doors is I ask them what are their issues. Because yeah. the biggest thing I want to do is listen to people. And I've heard some pretty insane stories from people in the county that make me realize they are not even concerned about national politics at on all. The, uh, on the jail, uh, where are you guys? Because uh, there's a public hearing that's going to be coming go up, ahead, uh, yep. talking about taking the property through eminent domain. So, as as young politicians, we, we how old are you, as, uh, by the way? I, I we're both 28. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we're we're willing to admit when we don't know things, and we came into this not having a lot of information on the jail. So we went out and we did our research. We looked at the numbers and we asked a lot of people for as much information as we could get. And with all the information we got, we realized that. Building a new jail is not a fiscally responsible decision to make. Right now, it costs about $350 a day per inmate to keep them in the jail and only about $100 to send them out. And uh, if you build a new jail, it'll lower that $350 a little bit uh, and then you'll have a little bit of savings. But the savings isn't even close to what it would cost for $40 million. See, yeah. and that's completely in contrast to everything that we have been told by yep. the numbers. Yeah. Number yeah. one, that the, there's a mandate that the, there has to be a new jail that, or we have to ship false. everybody out. Yeah, that, that's yep. also false. You that, believe that's false? Uh, they, they were mandated to have plans for a new jail. Right. They weren't mandated to build a new jail. They just had to have a, a plan for if they need to build a new jail this is what they would do. So you're saying by having a jail, a new facility, um, which not only could you fill what you're currently using, but you might be able to bring in inmates from other facilities. So there might be a way to generate money. You believe that it would be cost effective to ship them out? Yeah, it, yes. it would. Ninety dollars a day, as opposed to three hundred and fifty dollars a day. And does that include costs, though? To transportation bring, costs. Transportation, you, bringing them back. When the numbers are finally, yeah. when the numbers are finally crunched, you get somewhere around saving the taxpayers about two million dollars a year when you ship when you ship people out of the mm. county instead. I gotta. I'm gonna have to dig into that because yeah. it, it's it's very <laughs> interesting. Like you said, there's a lot of information out there, and and they're all it's all like platitudes. But when you look at the actual numbers, it. The, the, the state is mandating that this jail get built because there's a lot of strong arming to make the county build a new jail. Right. But the actual jail itself 
is not falling apart on the outside at all. And there's only a couple of mandates that the state is requiring the jail to fix in order to not drop it down to a six bed holding temporary. Holding so let facility. me get this straight. You guys should be okay with keeping the jail. This is the funniest thing. So they want to move the jail out onto Route 28 out at the old PNC site. That's Nichols, yeah. uh, is what I call it. That's where I think Nichols. And the wants. sheriff also wants to. Be, the sheriff actually wants to build it near the Humane Society. I understand. Area. So, yeah. but moving it out, but but. Currently, the jail is right in the middle of the village. Yeah. Um, and and so, there has not been there has not been a single. And I've talked to people, like yeah. actual people that live <clears throat> in the in my district and around Herkimer, and they said they have no issue with it. There, I'm sure there are some people that have issue with it, but but no one has really broken out yeah. of that jail and caused havoc and mayhem inside Herkimer. Haven't seen a single story. In, well, that in, would also be an argument for being able to put it over on the PNC site where you, it's not going to. It, as a matter of fact, the Sheriff Machel, uh, when we spoke to him about this issue, said really the safest place you're going to find anywhere is right around a jail because you have people there and they're guarding inmates and it's it's actually pretty safe. Any other issues, key issues that you guys are both? Uh... Yeah, uh, you know, honestly, knocking on people's doors, the biggest thing, and it kind of ties into the jail issue, is, is drugs. You know, you have a lot of people in this area, in Herkimer and in Little Falls, that talk about a heroin epidemic. Mm -hmm. It's not just in New Hampshire. The national issue of heroin epidemic is right here in Herkimer. A sure. lot of people continuously say that drugs are an issue to them. And when I talked to the sheriff himself, I asked him how many people are being thrown into jail based on drug-related charges. And he wasn't able to give me a real number, but he said a lot. Yeah. So, you know, as opposed to continuing to shell out taxpayer dollars for housing inmates, why not be proactive? You know, Tim and I want to see the county work towards getting more money invested into mental health and maybe, maybe even use some of that sales tax money. Do you yeah. know about the sales tax money? <clears throat> Twenty million dollars in a slush fund that they created with the ta sales tax mm -hmm. to fund the jail. It's about twenty million dollars that Herkimer County has, and yeah. Tim and I think that they should. That, that's one of the reasons why we think maybe we should consider other things like a rehab facility, because a lot of people that are going into jail have no options t before they get to jail, and that's why they go to jail because right. they make poor choices because there's no options available to them, and it's really tough to get them the help they need. So why not invest some of that? 20 million into making Herkimer County a little bit better right. for people. I'm going to ask you last question. I'll just go quick. Can we go back to the jail on the numbers you came up with the 90 bucks a day versus the 350? Where'd you get that? I, I've just, I don't know. I have no idea, but the 90 seemed a little low to be transporting, feeding and all that stuff for an inmate. Employees, uh, yeah. uh, insurance. Uh, the, the, I, I the, think it's uh, a little bit closer to a hundred is what I said. Mm -hmm. Um, but it that does that includes the gas, it includes uh, transportation, it includes the uh, fee of holding them at the other facilities, and uh, those numbers uh, come from a uh, a study done. Uh, it is actually a little bit outdated, and we've actually asked for them to update the study. It was done in 2011, I mm -hmm. believe, uh, by Jim Wallace, who went and outlined all of the costs of the jail as it is, the cost of the jail if they build it, and the cost of sending in all a total board out. And so. what you're saying, though, is that is in complete contrast to what we've been told. Yes. Well, you no, know, because the, the, the people, there's a lot of people that really want this jail built, and it, right. it leads you to wonder, <clears throat> Why do they want that jail built? Like, it, what, what personal vested interest do we have in building that jail for certain people? And and that's the thing. You know, we we have we have I've talked to some actual people who say we need a new jail. And I'm like, well, are you well, implying that there's some politician there that is uh, that is going to be benefiting from the jail? That that's 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 exactly what I think is is who? happening. I I don't know. I think it's a, I think it's the, a lot of people on the on the legislature as a whole. All right. Um, I, I honestly I honestly do could believe. It, you that. think it could be my father? I don't think so he's on the legislature i know he is <laughs> yeah. i know he is <laughs> just checking yeah uh i'm i mean that's a pretty tough accusation to make yeah i don't know if it's necessarily you know somebody going to directly benefit yeah. but i i just think that you know as as a whole people like new things right and you, okay. he, you hear we can have a new jail and it, it, it is, sounds, and honestly, it that's sounds a, nice. Keith, that's a tough accusation to make. Well, let's 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 rewind with the whole you know idea. It would of be better if you rewind it. Yeah, well, rewinding would be better. Well, we can't rewind the, the radio interview, but in yeah. terms of in terms of saying accusation, <clears throat> I just honestly think that they have had it in their minds for so long to to show the taxpayers that they're going to do something with this jail. All They've right. been told for twenty years. It's it's been going on since before Tim and I were even born, and the fact is. Now they're being so pressured to build a jail that I feel like some of these some right. of these things that you've been told by a lot of people, all these contrasting things that what we're telling you with the numbers, I think that there's a vested interest in the legislature as a whole 
to build this jail. All right. You know, that, so here's what we'll, we'll do is sure. we'll follow up with Jim Wallace tomorrow. Let's see if we can get Jim on tomorrow and, That'd be great. and look at your numbers. And I would love to see if we could set up a – maybe there will be a debate down the road before uh, before November between the two right. of you and your sure. opponents. Okay, Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, gentlemen, thank you for your time. I appreciate it.